And a good Wednesday afternoon, Roger Hill of Weathering Heights. This Volca Weather Hazards weather video is driven by 802cars.com. It represents 802 Toyota, Twin City Subaru, and 802 Honda, all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Looking at the big picture, a lot of things to talk about here. We'll concentrate on uh, the large-scale features. First of all, a big trough of lower pressure uh, up in Canada here with the uh, squeeze of the jet stream. This is the polar branch of the jet stream, mostly in Canada. Uh, this trough line here, and this is what's uh, picking up a little bit of moisture off the uh, Gulf of Mexico and kind of a frontal genesis, kind of a baroclinic zone of uh, weather systems kind of riding these frontal systems and then working through. Now, we're going to see, we've been seeing some showers, of course, across the region, but there'll be another batch of it, uh, it looks like around mid to late evening uh, with the main frontal system. And that may produce a, a few thunderstorms in the mix as well. Otherwise, we're probably looking at just uh, fairly cool conditions, a little bit of a sort of drippy conditions out there, showers, and uh, considerable amounts of cloud cover. The actual front we're talking about right here associated again with this trough as it's going to move on in. This is what we call a difluent flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That means that storms that could develop vent out, basically, and uh, there's a vacuum up here. Um, there's a little bit of a squeeze here, and so where there's that vacuum, that's where we have some upward venting. And this is a difluent flow, and that difluence is associated sometimes with thunderstorms, and that's going to be the main uh, kicker here once this moves on by as that difluent flow reaches into Vermont, and then it kind of dissipates out, and then we're looking at a stretch of incredible weather. Tropics. We have a uh, tropical storm Nana. This is a system that's going to be taking a track toward Honduras. And then we have Tropical uh, Storm Omar that's off the coast. It's basically in the shipping lanes. Not going to be a problem for too many folks, uh, except if you're in the North Atlantic. In between, kind of wet, cloudy, uh, high dew point temperatures. You can see the uh, capes here, uh, illustrated by this uh, filled in uh, temp these uh, colors right here. A little bit of that same cape, convective available potential energy. Super duper dry. And, of course, we have still smoke concentrations out in the San Francisco Bay Area. Looking at the European model, I'm going to run precipitable water metrics and a couple things to note. If you look at, it, at the uh, tropical storm Nana, this is Nana here. And you can see where it's going to be taking a track sort of a, kind of a west-south-westward and then actually cross uh, Central America and then dump out in the Pacific Ocean. Now, this is exceptionally dry air for this particular region, dry in the blue. This is our higher precipitable water metrics that's currently over us right now so as you run the model you can kind of get the whole shape of things you can consider looking at this here and that of course is nana it moves ashore makes landfall then it crosses into central america now back at our neck of the woods we do have this frontal boundary that's going to be working into tonight and uh, mainly mid to late evening and you can see there's some indications where there's so many more concentrated uh, higher precipitable water uh, better than 3.2 and uh, that would illustrate maybe some convective impulses some clusters if you will uh, in that particular area now it moves on out we get uh, drier air re to replace that that'll be working in during the overnight period tonight and then during the day tomorrow tomorrow should be a fabulous day we have another little bare uh, area of uh, moisture that's going to be working on into the region that gets in here and you can see how that kind of makes it into the southern two-thirds of Vermont and uh, this would be valid 05Z that's about uh, midnight or so uh, one o'clock in the morning on early Friday morning so once that goes on by uh, we get this little frontal boundary that's going to also be taking place in the morning hours on Friday it pushes on through and introduces us to this area which is uh, really stretches way back up into the Yukon and this is of course uh, below normal precipitable water, dry conditions, and uh, it's going to be luxurious with uh, about five days at least of a stretch of dry weather, probably going much further than that. This is valid into Saturday. We're going to uh, switch this out to the most previous model run here. Here we go. And just to carry this through, you can see now we're into Saturday, Sunday, and then the next chance we start to see a little bit of moisture squirted in along the U.S. Uh, uh, lower 48 uh, states, Canada, Canadian border region. That finally gets in here along about uh, late Monday, Labor Day, or Tuesday of next week. And that area of higher pressure just kind of continues until it doesn't. That frontal system finally gets in here. When's that? Next Thursday. Amazing. 
Okay, this is uh, uh, 8 o'clock this evening, and you can see rain showers. This is the frontal boundary, a little bit, uh, uh, slightly more precipitation indicated there. And as it, we work it on through, moves through during the overnight period, there's a weak area of higher pressure that builds back in for tomorrow, Thursday. And then uh, that little next system is going to try to squirt on in here. And uh, you can kind of see that it goes through. But it's really going to affect us at night, and that's going to be overnight Thursday night into early Friday morning. With that next frontal boundary, look at this, cold enough to snow, 540, 5400 meter thicknesses up in uh, Canada here. And then uh, we'll see sort of in between weather as high pressure here is going to try to build and force uh, to the uh, north and west, east into uh, a good portion of New England. And you can see that we remain dry, dry, dry. Now we're into Sunday, now Labor Day Monday. And you can see this area of higher pressure is reinforced and ridges off to the uh sort of west-southwest, and uh, it looks like an exceptional period here. Here we go. We're going into Thursday. When? The 10th of September. That's a long ways out, today only being the 2nd. Looking at the GFS and Canadian Ensemble Centre of Montpelier, Vermont, this is a three-hourly uh, quantitative precipitation forecast. So each little bump here indicates a little bit of precipitation that could be uh, in the models. You're not looking at very much, and we know that we have a major dry stretch. So looking at the regular... Uh, Quantitative precipitation forecast accumulated totals, two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, and so forth, one inch. Look at that. We stay below basically two tenths for the next several days. A little bit into uh, uh, beyond this period, looks like we pick up a little bit of precipitation. Again, this is uh, way out there. Looks like a precipitation fields. I see kind of two different storm tracks right now. Um, this would be, at, uh, wow, 3.5 inches. And you can see that this is one storm track, and then here's another one. And we are in between. That's only about a half inch of total precipitation right there. This is uh, for the next seven days. And the climate reanalyzer, this is what it looks like. So we have a little bit of below normal, uh, mostly above normal. Greenland's uh, cooler than normal, and the Arctic is still above normal. It looks like the main areas are in the southern parts of the uh, Siberian area, uh, Tibet, and, and uh, back into the Himalayas. But uh, not a whole lot to see here at this point. Two meter temperatures. Uh, again, this is the Canadian GFS Ensemble. Chilly day today. Much warmer tomorrow. Then we see a little bit of a step ladder downward and then a little bit of an uptick upward. And that's uh, also in pretty good agreement with the European model. Meteorological output statistics or MOS guidance. You can see that we're running about three degrees above normal. This is neutral. That's colder than normal. Along the uh, Pacific coast, uh, pretty warm, California and so forth, kind of neutral in between. A little bit of chillier air is moving in, and about three days later, looks like this. Warmer than normal here, colder than normal, and this is a big large-scale weather change. It's really going to be undergoing uh, those large-scale changes uh, really this weekend and into most of next week. First things first, Omar is a tropical storm, uh, 40 miles per hour sustained uh, winds, not a big deal. It's moving uh, northeast at 13. We got tropical storm Nana that's moving west at about 17 miles an hour. And that will probably become a hurricane or could become a category one hurricane while making landfall there. And with the other easterly waves, a couple things to explore. First of all, this is... Uh, about a 60% chance of formation over the next five days as we have an easterly wave just coming off the west coast of Africa and yet another system, 30%, and this is below what we call the monsoon trough that's uh, situated along the inner tropical convergence zone near the equator, about 10 degrees north latitude. That's it from here, Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.